good morning and uh, thanks very much uh, to the Alliance for uh, having us here and also congratulations for uh, the nice uh, expanded and very broad meeting that this has turned into over the past few, few years. Um, for those of you who don't know, Saitori is a local San Diego company uh, just up the street here. We've been focusing on uh, developing uh, stem and regenerative cell technology from fat tissue for the past decade. And we are a public company listed on NASDAQ, so I, as with my predecessors here, will show you the safe harbor statement and uh, ask you to refer to our SEC filings because of the forward-looking statements. So Saitori's approach is unique. We are looking at an autologous, freshly isolated uh, cell therapy. It's a therapeutic approach, but it's based on a device. It, uh, our platform is called the Solution System. It's an electromechanical uh, device driven by software that has a single-use sterile consumable component as well as some reagents. The uh, process is harvesting the fat tissue right from the patient at the time of the procedure and then processing it in about an hour. And this will enable a mix of cells to be re-injected or delivered back to the patient. It's, um, it, it puts us in a, in a gray area from a regulatory standpoint, though, because while we are a device, we are trying to develop therapeutic indications. So in discussions with the FDA over the years, what ultimately has come from this and from our request for designation is that we are, in fact, a device, but CBER is regulating us. And after some back and forth, we're, we're all on the same page that we are uh, uh, going down the PMA pathway with, with uh, CBER, and as I'll describe a little later in the talk, we have uh, some clinical activity underway in the United States accordingly. In the uh, EU, we are a device as well. Our notified body has uh, approved the system along with some indications. Um, so we are, we are C marked and, and fully commercial in Europe. One of the th advantages of this device-based approach is that um, we're able to have a, a very I'd say effective uh, cost of goods. It's a, it's a very attractive business model, uh, razor razor blade type, in which we're able to offer this uh, you know, regenerative cell technology for a, a pretty reasonable cost to the patient and to the healthcare system. So one of the things that I think make us unique is that unlike a cultured cell, we have this mixed population of cells, and you can see the distribution up on the, up on the screen, but that enables us to really look at our technology as a platform. And with any platform technology, especially as a smaller company, it gets challenging to uh, decide where to prioritize and where to focus. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about what, uh, what we're focusing on currently. Cardiovascular has been our, our pipeline focus for, for quite some time. We've done a fair bit of work over in Europe and now uh, in, in the US. In Europe, we uh, did two different trials, uh, pilot uh, proof of concept type trials, one for uh, AMI and the other one for chronic heart disease. And I'll go over those shortly. As a result of our CMARC and regulatory approvals otherwise, we've been commercializing the, uh, the technology in Europe, in Japan, and elsewhere. And one of the uh, core focuses that we've had is to commercialize this strategically and work with uh, physicians and interested uh, investigators to develop the technology for new indications that Saitori may not have sponsored directly, but that they've got interest in, that they've demonstrated it's safe, that they get their local IRB approval for. And so they'll go ahead and do some of these uh, studies. The benefit to us is that they will be uh, generating data that we can then use to decide what we want to look at in the future. And that's, that activity was perhaps the first step that led to another area that we're currently focused on, which is uh, uh, thermal burns. The thermal burn focus really stemmed from the fact that uh, BARDA, the US agency, uh, currently shut down with all the rest of them. But uh, back when they were working, we worked with them to, uh, we engaged with them, and they granted us a contract 
for development of our technology for irradiated uh, patients who have th severe thermal burns in the event of a mass casualty event. So this is a, a core area, and it, it's a good example of what we're hoping to, again, leverage these investigator-initiated studies into um, you know, new strategic partnerships in areas that the company is not currently founding or uh, currently focused on. Our cardiac pro, uh, program here, again, we've uh, completed the proof of concept trial, and in the U.S., we're enrolling our Athena trial. And the mechanism that allows us to focus on, on cardiac is uh, very busy here, but over, over time, both from our own work as well as in the literature, we've really been able to say, okay, for ischemic heart disease, looking at this mixed cell population, all the different cell types that they have uh, within our output, what might be going on here? And we can look, and I'm not going to go through all the detailed mechanisms, but essentially what we've been able to see is that through an increase in perfusion, a decrease in infl inflammation, as well as a decrease in fibrosis, this can translate to some stabilization of the disease, looking at, uh, based on exercise tolerance, VO2 max, and a quality of life benefit to the patient. Precise was our European proof of concept uh, study, and it was really a safety-focused study with looking for um, uh, degrees of, of efficacy. We delivered the cells through an intramyocardial catheter uh, into the patients with chronic myocardial ischemia. This was really, again, patients who had un, you know, undergone all uh, standard of care and really had no treatment options left to them. It was a double-blind study with 27 subjects, 20, 21 in the, uh, in, in the treatment group and 26 in the placebo, or uh, six, excuse me, six in the placebo. The, uh, the heart was mapped using um, Nogastar, and then uh, 15 small injections were made into uh, each myocardium in the area where ischemia was visible based on the mapping, and the uh, J&J uh, Myostar catheter was used and we delivered about uh, 40 million uh, cells uh, per, per subject. And what we saw here, and this is some of the 18-month 18, 18 data that's already been published, is that if you look at the placebo group, well, let me start by saying VO2 max is, is a good clinical measurement where if you um, progress down towards the 14 level, that's the, one of the thresholds they use for saying you're a good candidate for a transplant. So the goal is to keep your VO2 max above the 14 level. The placebo group started off actually at about a 19 and over the first six months and continuing on reduced down to about 15. Whereas if you look at the ADR, ADRC treatment group, we actually started with a sicker population but we're able to stabilize and, in fact, improve to a degree their VO2 max. So we're very excited about this trend that we saw and expect that this is one of the key measurements we'll look at uh, as we go towards our further chronic heart disease studies. Some of the other out outcome measurements that we saw, we looked at Holter. There were no adverse effects on, a, on the rhythm at either 6 and 18 months. As I mentioned, the VO2 max was improved. It was statistically significant, even though, again, this was a relatively small patient study. Through MRI, we were able to uh, see an, uh, a decrease in the infarct size um, of, of the ischemic area. There were no safety issues. And the 36-month data, which will be published in, in uh, the fairly near future here, um, We've got a good take on mortality now in which you can see that the ADRC treated group actually has a significantly lower mortality rate than the placebo. Again, small numbers, but it's the trend we wanted and are happy to see. A little bit about the design of our Athena trials currently enrolling in the U.S. Again, this is heart failure due to ischemic heart disease. They're based off of that precise European pilot study. These also are prospective double-blind studies with placebo control. Um, 90 patients are our target here. We're going to look at 45 uh, patients at the low dose and 45 at the high dose um, in up to 10 centers around the U.S. We 
expect to get our first data uh, readout in 2014 and anticipate engaging for a pivotal trial initiation in 2015. Some of the endpoints that we're going to look at in Athena, because here again in these, in these phase two studies, we want to uh, gear up, work with the FDA, and make sure we have outcomes and endpoints that will enable us to do a, a pivotal study that will, will not break the bank. It will not be thousands of patients. So we want to try to establish what those are here in our phase two studies. And in our discussions with them, you know, so far we've been able to align on a number of safety and efficacy endpoints, including you know, SAEs, the arrhythmia assessment, uh, MACE, all standard stuff there, but uh, looking at VO2 max, uh, LV uh, ejection fraction, and, and diastolic and systolic uh, measurements by echo. In addition, uh, we'll look at SPECT, as well as um, both uh, NYHA, CCS classifications for quality of life and other heart failure symptoms, uh, including uh, Minnesota and SF36 questionnaires. So while we're heavily focused on our cardiac platform clinically, coming along behind it is our work with, with the U.S. government, with BARDA, and this was a, a contract that we announced last year about this time. It's staged, so there are several options. Our baseline period is currently underway. And we've talked that there are three basic milestones. So this first uh, part of it is scheduled to be a two-year contract, but we believe we're, we're on or ahead of schedule on that front. We've already announced that the first um, uh, deliverable of showing that our next generation system currently in development is comparable or better than the current system in terms of the cell yield and the outcome. We're also quite down the road uh, in a successful way with showing that you can actually get adipose tissue from patients who have had a burn. And finally, we think that there's uh, a, a lot of work that we've already made good progress on on the uh, preclinical animal model because this is a, a fairly challenging model, in, in fact, and we had to develop it because while there are burn models and while there are radiation models, there were not any good models to that combine the two. So we had to look at irradiate, you know, find the right facilities and develop the model for an irradiated animal that we can then apply a thermal burn to, to really uh, simulate what BARDA would be looking for as an efficacious treatment modality. Once we finish these, uh, these milestones, the three baseline milestones, this will trigger several options that we well, uh, again, the contract calls for Q3 of 2014. We anticipate being able to uh, hopefully complete in Q1 of, of next year. And if so, if we're able to trigger these in the, in the way that we think we will, um, this will generate up to another 56 million or so in funding. The first phase was a, a fairly small initial uh, contract amount of, of just less than 5 million. So. We're working very hard to uh, free up some of that government funding. Hopefully, they'll get their doors open here shortly. On the commercial side of the business, really what uh, we've been focusing on is selling the systems and consumables for researchers who are conducting these independent uh, funded uh, investigator-driven studies, really to validate those new indications, build a brand presence with these physicians and researchers. Uh, and, of course, to offset some of our burn uh, with increased revenues. We've got approvals around the, uh, around the world, Japan. Uh, we've got a Class I designation, and we're at, uh, looking forward to seeing how the new legislation that's been discussed already uh, works out. Australia approval we announced earlier this year uh, for the solution system. We've also announced some expanded claims that we've uh, gained in Europe over the past year for ischemic tissue and muscle, as well as uh, for the approval of intravase, which is our uh, cardiac uh, reagent that's part of the process. So wrapping up relatively quickly here, I just wanted to show that this is not a small token effort. We actually have over 50 of these investigator-initiated studies ongoing around the world, a lot of them focused in Europe as well as in, in uh, Japan and Asia Pacific. Some of these have generated data that has already been published, for instance, uh, male stress urinary continence data from Japan that was uh, published earlier this year in August, showed a nice about 60% reduction 
in, um, in leakage. I won't go through all the other uh, uh, studies, but uh, diabetic ulcer studies and as well as a nice uh, scleroderma study from some of our European activities published earlier this year as well. So finally, what this investigator-initiated program as well as our internal efforts allow us to, to also do is to continue to generate our IP portfolio. We feel we've got a very strong and broad portfolio or both uh, globally uh, and regionally, but in terms of compositionally, uh, device-based, process-based, et cetera, that uh, put us in good position to succeed in this uh, very exciting area. So with that, uh, thank you very much for your attention. And again, appreciate the, uh, the invitation to talk to you.